So you want to be an ESL teacher. I'm about to spill the tea on that. Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. My name is Dora K. Fulton. And on this channel, we talk all things motivation as well as some creativity in the mix. And I would like to introduce my revamped series called Motivation ESL, which is a series where I talk about all things English as a second language. Back in 2017, I spent some time um, writing on my Motivational ESL blog, which by the way is being revamped, okay, but I will include the link here in this video. And I spent that time really going um, in talking about being an ESL teacher, what it's like, how to stay motivated, how to motivate your students, etc. And many of you really, really enjoyed one of my oldest and first videos, which is first day of ESL class, which gained over 7,000 views and much, much appreciation for that. Because let me tell you, the background was very dark. I just got up on camera and started talking. I didn't even have a real intro. I had no notes. I just started talking. Hi everyone. So it's Dara again. So I wanted to do the first video, or I should say the second video, technically, of motivation for the ESL teacher and student. So for today, we're going to talk about your first ESL class. And believe it or not, I actually recorded that video where I'm sitting right now. Um, it's just that at that time, of course, um, I didn't have a ring light. It wasn't as bright and beautiful as it is now. So things have changed over the years. But without further ado, Let's talk about you wanting to be an ESL teacher. So what is ESL? ESL stands for English as a second language. And what this simply means is you are going to be helping both children or adults, helping them learn the English language. Now, there is a misconception when you say ESL because sometimes people think that you have to be bilingual or you have to speak a different language to teach English. And the truth is, you do not. Even if English is not your first language, you can still teach ESL to others. The key is, and the first and most important thing you have to ask yourself is, why do I want to teach English? And this is something that when you are first starting this journey, even myself included, we usually don't get asked this question and we don't even think to ask ourselves this question. We just jump in and start teaching. But I can tell you with my 17 years experience, yes, friends, this June of 2022 will make 17 official years that I have been teaching ESL and I've been working in adult education from the start of my career. So I can't speak on what it's like to be an ESL teacher teaching children or adolescents, but I definitely could talk about what it's like to teach adults. And in this Motivation ESL series, I will be discussing certain things that you should know if you are teaching adults particularly, but just overall things that you should know and what to expect. But you want to be this teacher, right? So ask yourself, why do I want to become an ESL teacher? That is a very broad question, but it's a very important one because it's going to help you to navigate in these ESL waters, as I like to say. Now, another thing you want to do is start doing your research. Learn about what requirements it will take for you to become an ESL teacher. Now, I will say here, one of the biggest requirements that uh, employers are looking for are either teachers who are experienced and even with teachers with little to no experience to have some type of credential. They usually want someone with a four-year degree, a bachelor's degree, usually in English or some type of related um, subject matter. But again, if you have your bachelor's, say, in neuroscience, <laughs> okay, do not worry about that. A four-year degree is the most important thing as well as certification. One of the main certifications that is required to be an ESL teacher is TESOL. And TESOL stands for Teaching English to Speakers of Other Languages. Let me say now in this profession, there are a lot of acronyms, okay? So I am going to be spending some time breaking that down because you will hear a lot of ESL, ELL, TESOL, TEFL, it's all these different things. And you're like, whoa, what is this? And speaking of TEFL, <laughs> okay, that stands for teaching English as a foreign language. Now, let me go 
a little deeper with that because again you might be wondering what is the difference between TESOL and TEFL and what is the certification all about okay TESOL and TEFL are pretty much similar I'm not going to say they're the same but they are similar depending on what country you are planning to teach in okay will determine what type of certification you will need TESOL is the general one, okay? And that's really required here in the United States, teaching English to speakers of other languages because you don't know necessarily the languages of the students you are going to be teaching, but that's why we say other languages. It could be, you could be working with students from pretty much anywhere around the world who speak a variety of languages, right? TEFL is a little different because that's teaching English um, as a foreign language. What that means is maybe you are going to a country where English is not the dominant language, but it is considered the foreign language, right? Or the second language. So that's why you have the certification that will say TEFL because that would be very useful if you're planning on teaching a country where English is not the dominant language, okay? Then there's something called ELL, which stands for English Language Learners. This is more of a generalized um, acronym. This could really be for anyone. This could be for children, adolescents, or adults. But ESL is specific to English as a second language. So certification, let's talk about it. In any type of certification, the most important thing they're going to focus on is what is ESL, how to get started, and learning the methodology, which just means the how to. How do you teach English as a second language? And all programs will vary. All of them have their own different modules and setups and stuff. But I would tell you right now, it's a great way for new teachers who are totally new to this profession to kind of get a snapshot of what they can expect when they become certified. This is also a great way for people who are looking to maybe have a secondary job or maybe this is something you want to do on the side. Having that certification definitely helps. And I should also know it doesn't take a long time. The schools that I participate in, it did not take a long time. And I will say out of the three of them, IOA only took me about two weeks to complete. Some people can do it in one week. So if you're on a time crunch and you're like, hey, I don't want to spend six months to a year doing this, you don't have to. Okay. Now, this is very important to know when you get your certification. Okay. You don't want to just get it and then that's it. You need to utilize it when it comes to looking for ESO jobs. You want to make sure you have that on your resume. If you do not have a four year degree, that's perfectly fine. A lot of employers just want to really see that you're certified. They, if you have some type of college or some type of experience, if you do not have college at all, my best advice to you is to get some type of experience. This could be in the form of tutoring. This can be volunteering, but getting some type of experience really, really helps. Okay. Because that lets the employer know that you kind of have an idea how to teach. You have the certification, right? And then this is where you can market yourself. If you've done private tutoring, maybe you've done this prior to becoming certified, definitely, definitely make sure you put that on your resume. Employers really care about your knowledge. They want to know, do you know how to teach? But here's the part that you may not know. You're not going to really, really know how to teach until you teach. And this is where it can get a little scary. But here's the good news. I'm here to help new teachers like yourself to get started. And I will reserve that at the end of this video, but let me just say now that it doesn't have to be a scary process or transition, but it can be very nerve wracking when you are stepping inside of a classroom for the first time and you really have no idea what to do. In this series, I am going to be spending some time on this process. We will talk about lesson planning. We will talk about um, book materials that I personally use that I will be sharing on this channel because a lot of times I come across videos of teachers talking about you need to have the right materials, but they don't share the type of materials. And it's like, wait a minute, how can I talk about something if I can't share this with you? So yes, I also will be sharing my materials because I am a business. The name of my business is called Applied DSL. 
and it's an online English tutoring service where I help adult learners build their confidence while practicing and improving their English speaking skills. And I am also an author, okay, I have workbooks as well as worksheets as well as video lessons to help new teachers as well as experienced teachers to help their students, whether you're a private tutor or you're working at a school. I'm happy to introduce my latest book, Science Resource Book, which is now available on Amazon, as well as my other two workbooks. This book is special because we're going to talk about all things signs, street signs, store signs, COVID-19 signs, as well as instructions. So if you'd like to learn more about my latest book that was just published this month of May, please check it out. I would greatly appreciate it. So I am here to help you, okay? And I'm super excited to be sharing this with you. The other thing you want to also think about is population. This is critical. You really want to do a self-assessment of yourself as a person. Don't just jump in working with kids if you don't feel comfortable working with kids or you want to jump into working with adults and you're not comfortable or you're not sure. Now, when I started, I can tell you right now, I've always wanted to work with adults. So for me, that wasn't a difficult decision. The difficulty was I didn't realize the how to, okay, um, help my adult learners learn English. And so this is something that is going to take a lot of trial and error. The certification will give you a good overview of that, but I want to also make sure in this series, I kind of share with you the behind the scenes stuff that maybe people don't want to share or talk about. And especially in adult education, because unfortunately it doesn't always go like a textbook. Okay. Um, some things will happen where you're thinking, wait a minute, I didn't learn that in training and you may not. So I have a lot to share with you here and I am proud to be able to do this because I feel it's important as an educator and just as a good human to share the love. You know, it's good to share the love because there are a lot of you out there who have reached out to me, which I thank you and ask me questions like, hey, I want to get started teaching. I'm not sure how to start. Right. And I want to be that person to help you get started. So that's why I am revamping Motivation ESL. But yes, you really want to think about the population of people that you want to work with. And once you have that idea or you have or have an interest, I should say, then you can know how to move forward. You also want to pay attention to where you live and the requirements of the type of ESL jobs that's in your area. They will vary from place to place. I live in New York City, the United States, so the requirements here may be different from your home state or home country. Okay, if you're looking to travel internationally, you really want to pay attention to the requirements of the school or the tutoring center that you want to work at because every school has their own method and experience and requirements. So this is a process. Let me just say this now. It's not a one, two, three situation. The other thing which can kind of alleviate some of the stress is everything for the most part has been done remotely and online ESL teaching, which is going to be a huge topic we will talk about, um, has really changed the ESL game in a tremendous way for the good and maybe for the not so good. Okay. Depending on the situation, you also want to look into online teaching because most schools now are doing it, um, teaching online. So this is something you want to really consider. And if you're not a person who likes to be on camera like this, um, it may be a little challenging for you because I will tell you now from personal experience, I do work for two schools. One of them is based online. Well, both of them teach, have classes online, but one is a online school, right? So the teacher must be on camera, regardless if the student is on camera or not. And it's something that you can get used to doing, but you have to be willing to. So you really want to keep that in mind as well, that a lot of things have shifted in ESL dramatically since the time I started back in 2005. And so you really want to take that into consideration. If you're doing private tutoring, there's more flexibility, but when you're working for an employer, you may not have as much flexibility. You also have to consider time zones. The school that you work for might be in a different time zone that you're in, right? There's computer equipment you may need, like maybe a headset, a, a webcam, you know, things like that. So there's a lot involved. 
And this is just an overview. Um, I will be talking about this more in details in other videos, but I'm going to give you an overview now so you kind of know what to expect. Okay. Um, the other thing is background. So as you see in my background, I'm happy to present my new whiteboard. Yes, very happy about that. And of course, I have my little decorations here. Um, a lot of employers prefer you to have no background at all, or maybe a whiteboard like this. They may not want you to have something like this. So it all depends. And some schools want you to have uniform. So you really want to take your time. Before you jump into certification and, you know, just jump into teaching, you really want to think about all of these aspects. But certification is definitely, definitely key. Okay. If you're working with children, it, there might be more certifications or maybe there's um, more requirements in that. And I can't speak on that because I'm not sure. But I will say in adult ed, it's pretty flexible. Um, for the most part, they really want to see educational background some type of experience preferred there are some employers that will take a chance on you even if you don't have teaching experience but my best advice to you is if you can get some experience now i would do so yes ask yourself what is your end goal now you might be wondering why am i talking about end goal end goal just means what is it that you're trying to get out of this as a teacher is your goal is just to make money is it to really help and make a difference in the world it do you care about student learning do you want to see your students succeed because let me just be very 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 blunt with all of you okay when you become a teacher it's not about you anymore it's about the students and some teachers kind of forget that you know it's not about how wonderful you are and how many degrees you have and how beautiful and all that no you're entering a classroom whether it's virtual or in person where the people in that classroom want to know what you know okay they want to speak the language that you're speaking which is english so you want to be mindful of that it's a very selfless job that makes a very big difference in the long run if you are a giving type of person that you love to help people you really want to um make a difference you love to see people succeed this is a job for you but if you're a person where it's all about you and your success and you don't care about others this is not the position for you and lastly, let's talk about money. I purposely wanted to leave money at the end because I know people watch these type of videos because they think, how much money are you going to make? How much money are you going to make? You will make money, but you won't be super rich, okay? And I have to be blunt about that. A lot of schools don't pay very well. I'm just keeping it real. And a lot of them only offer part-time position, part-time temporary contractual, which means you're more of a freelancer. So when it comes to the money department, you really have to do your homework and ask yourself, are you comfortable with that? If you are traveling overseas, maybe you may make more in a different country than in your own country. And a lot of times that's what happens. So you really want to take time to think about that. And even if you go independently, don't think because you're doing this on your own, you become this rich person. It doesn't work like that. It takes more work, more time, more planning, more marketing, because you are doing everything and as a business owner right now i can tell you you do everything <laughs> okay when you work for school the school provides the students for you when you work on your own you have to find the students it's not easy so it's a profession that is of great need and it's a helping profession which makes it even more beautiful because you're helping people from around the world but you really have to be honest with yourself, your current situation and circumstances and ask yourself, what is your end goal? What is it you're trying to get out of this? How long do you want to do this? And once you ask those questions and going back to your why, as I said in the beginning of this video, then and only then you will know if this is the career path for you. I am just proud to be doing this. I am offering uh, consulting services now where I'll be able to meet with teachers once one we can do a zoom call a phone call where I get a chance to help you in your journey being a teacher whether you are a new teacher or maybe you have some experience on your belt but you just need a little help I'm offering that definitely definitely send me an email I have my information underneath this video so then we can discuss further and I could share my services to you thank you so much for watching this video today as I always tell my students always try your best because when you try your best you certainly will do your best please check out my website appliedesl.com for all your learning needs there is something for everyone's budget and i'll see you in the next video take care everyone